Hello everybody and welcome to Spanish for Gringos. I am Mark and this is lesson six, por versus para. Now, in Spanish, um, the word for is represented by two words uh, loosely, por and para. Uh, but I just want to begin off this lesson by saying the word for in Spanish doesn't exist. It's just a loose approximation. Um, we translate it in English as, oh, okay, in the sentence they're meaning for something. Um, but often in times Spanish, uh, they will use, um, instead of for, they will use of, or instead of for, they will use to. And sometimes they will use both at the same time and will interchange them. So I want you to think of um, para, meaning basically for most of the time, and sometimes it means other words, and por, uh, most of the time means other words like two of or you know whatever and then less times it means for. Basically for in Spanish is a preposition okay it's used uh, as, a, as a transition or a connection in between thoughts or ideas so like I said before uh, you're gonna look at the board and you're gonna see what the fuck is all of this it's a bunch of gibberish it's, it's a, uh, Para uh, can have five or six different uh, usages and, and rules, and poor probably has a little more, probably of like six or seven. I don't even have all of them on the board. I'm just giving you some examples. So this video is not gonna be very long. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it down, I'm gonna explain how they're used, and then I'm gonna sum it up in the end, and I'm gonna give you kind of a little cheat sheet of, of when it's more likely that poor is being used and when it's more likely that para is being used. Uh, poor can be used for direction or place, um, duration for time, uh, trade or commerce, a reason, because of something, or travel, place, or location. So I'll break it down first the direction or place. Um, if you're going, you know, uh, the reason you're going somewhere is to get somewhere, it's to, to go to a place, then they would use por. An example of that would be, vamos por la playa, let's go for the beach. Now, it's a little complicated uh, because most often in Spanish they will say, voy a la playa, uh, which literally means I'm going to the beach. Uh, but both are being used, both are correct. You can say, uh, in another example, you can say, vamos por la playa, uh, let's go for the beach, or you can say, vamos a la playa, let's go to the beach. Both are used correct. Um, I will explain at the end of the lesson why they usually use a in lieu of por for that example. But moving on, duration. Uh, uh, yo necesito trabajar por ocho horas. I need to work for eight hours. So in this case, they're talking about a duration of time, and so they would use por there. Trade. Um, uh, you could say, uh, daré mi manzana uh, por tu naranja. I will give you my apple for your orange. Anytime you're talking about exchanging something for money or exchanging something for one-on-one, -on -one, any type of commerce or trade that will use por, you know, is basically poor, think of it poor as the equal sign. It's like, I think my apple equals your orange, so I will give you this for your orange. The reason, or because of something, these are two in the scene. If you're doing something for somebody and that person is the reason why you're doing something, then you use poor. Um, and I'll, I'll give you an example at the end of those two because it sort of ties in the pattern. You can use both. Um, but if you would say, for example, I would die for you, uh, you would say, morere por ti, I would die for you, morirre, it's a, it's a hard word to say. Um, travel place location, again, uh, it, they talk about locomotion, uh, methods of travel, if um, you're going by train, in English you would say I'm going, I'm traveling by train or I'm tra traveling uh, via train. In Spanish you would say, me voy por el tren, I'm going for the train or me voy por el avión, I'm going for, uh, well, 
in, the, in English, they'd say, I'm going by airplane. They would say, for the airplane. Or, me voy a ir um, por el barco. I'm going to go for the boat. So, again, uh, travel, location, uh, place. Vamos por la playa. Uh, those are examples of port. Now, we're going to move on and we're going to touch on para, and then we'll kind of associate the two. Para is used um, uh, physical destinations. Goals and purposes to give and receive dates and times and destination of the journey. Now, this is going to be like a theme. We'll start with physical destinations. If my my end destination is Spain, I would say um, uh, voy para España. I'm going to Spain, but in in this case. They were saying, I'm going for Spain, but para is being used because Spain is my final destination. So we fall under physical destinations. The end point is, I'm here, I'm here in Lima, Peru, and my end point is Spain. So I'm saying, me voy para España. Now, again, with the same example as uh, uh, voy a la playa or, or voy uh, por la playa, they would use, again, a, or sorry, a, a in lieu of para. Um, to avoid confusion, they would say voy a España, which means one or two things, I'm going to Spain or I, I will go to Spain. Or in, in Spanish, voy a has two meanings. It means I will or I'm going. Okay, so they're both used interchangeable. To give or receive, any time in Spanish that you were benefiting, you were getting something, or you're giving someone something and they're benefiting, then you would use always you use para. Uh, these flowers are for you. Um, esas flores es para ti. I'm giving you something, you're benefiting, you're receiving something, so it, they're using para. Uh, es para mí? Is, is that for me? It's, it's, a, it's a very straightforward example. All you have to do is think in the back of your head is if somebody is going to benefit something, uh, from something, they're going to get something, receive something, and or you're going to receive something. Um, it's uh, it, it, uh, again, it falls under destinations. Like for example, if if I'm going to give this marker to my friend Steve, well, Steve is the destination of this marker. This marker is going to go from my hands to Steve's hands. Steve being the destination. So. It's uh, Spanish is very symbolic like that. If something is is, is actually traveling, uh, communication would be another example. If I'm talking to you, well, you you're de the destination of my communication. I'm communicating from me directly to you. Think of an arrow, an arrow pointing in the direction of the destination. The communication is intended for you, the viewers. So it would be used in communication. I don't even think I put that in exam as an example here for communication, but I'll write it in real quick. Um, destinations from a journey, it sort of parallels uh, destinations, like um, I just wanted to write it again so it, it's home. Um, dates and times, um, you'd say, you know, uh, and you should actually write underneath that as well, deadlines. Deadlines. Okay. These are all in one. Uh, I need to have this paper in by Friday. And necesito terminar mi papel. Um, para el viernes, for Friday. Um, the 11th of this month, you could say para el once del este mes, uh, for, this, for, for the 11th of this month. Um, I need to be here uh, for 5 o'clock. Necesito llegar para el 5, uh, sorry, uh, la 5 de la hora. So, Destinations, times, deadlines, um, they're all, you know, uh, methods of time. So they all fall under the same guys. Um, goals and purposes. Um, me voy a estudiar para ganar uh, mejor educación. I, I would, uh, I want to study to get better education. So that would fall under goals and purposes. So, it's a little complicated and I know you're probably thinking, holy shit, I mean, there's so many different examples. Um, again, you're, I'm not going to give you some little golden rule or cheat sheet and say, this is when you use poor, this is when you use better. 
uh, it varies and it's very complicated and I myself get, uh, get confused at times, especially when both are interchanged with two. Like I said at the beginning of the video, por and para doesn't always necessarily mean for. And if you take nothing else away from this lesson, remember that it's loosely translated into for, but oftentimes it's used as of, in place of of, or in place of to, for example. I want you to look at this as por as being the cause, and para as being the effect. And also, reference this at the bottom, por is on behalf of, and para is in order to. So, you, you look at this as an example, in order to meet my deadlines, my, my times and dates, I'm using para. In order to communicate, I'm using para. In order to fulfill my goals and purposes, I'm using para. These are all effects. These are something that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to receive. I'm going to receive uh, the, the fruition of my goals and purposes. I'm going to complete my deadline or my timetable. I'm going to actually arrive at my final destination. So these are, think, think of para as being an arrow going from the, the object of the person to the destination. And if you look at poor as being uh, the reason or on behalf of something, because of something, by something, of something, um, it, it's, uh, you know, an example of a trade, then the reason uh, I want to trade is because I want your orange and you can have my apple or whatever it is it's a, you know it, it's a physical reason um, I'll give you another example and this sh maybe should clear it up a little bit um, we have an example I'll give you an example of uh, say you have a friend Steve and uh, he asks you hey uh, you know can you cover my shift I, I need you to work for me right uh, and you're like, okay, you can say, uh, when you show up your uh, at work and your boss is like, hey, we're Steve, you say, uh, me voy a trabajar por mi amigo. You're saying, I'm going to work for my friend, right? Your friend is the reason why you're working today because you're a good friend. He is the reason why you're there in his stead. Now you can say the same example. Uh, but change por for para and it will completely change the meaning of the sentence. And the example would be uh, your friend Steve, in this case, he's the boss and he asks, hey, come work for me. So you'd say to your other friend, say Dave, you say, you say to Dave, hey Dave, I'm going to work for my buddy Steve. Me voy a trabajar para mi amigo Steve. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell. I get a little excited because I want to emphasize that is you're working for your buddy, meaning he's your boss, and and uh, you know you're working for him. And the other example is your buddy's sick, and you're just taking his place, and your buddy is the reason why you're working. So that would be for. So that's an, uh, an example of how for can take on two completely different meanings in Spanish. Is one being the reason why you're doing something, or because of something, or on behalf of something. And the other is for an actual destination. In, in the case if you're working for your buddy, well, your buddy and that job, that's your destination. That's where you're going. You're working for them, you know, physically for them, not emotionally because of them. So I hope that clears it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to come back maybe another 10 or 20 videos and we'll touch on Port and Pata a little bit more complicated and hopefully by then you'll have a little bit better understanding of when these two are being used. Just remember the, the two key points, uh, cause and effect or reason and, or destination and think of it as being a placeholder and being used in lieu of words like of to or, or of as well. It doesn't always mean for. So until the next lesson, peace.